Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Today I'll be showing you how to make this ghost trail text effect with geometry nodes. This effect can be used to emphasize the movement by leaving some trails of images behind. Same node setup can be used to make clones of text follow one another. This can help you minimize the amount of manual animation efforts to make effects like the one in the background. Node setup is quite simple, so I encourage you to follow along. Okay, let's get into it. Alright, as soon as we get into Blender, we'll hop right into Geometry Nodes Layout. A to select all, X to delete, Shift A, Add Mesh Plane. Using Numpad 7M5, go into Top Horse Graphic View. Click on New, Delete Group Input, add a string input instead. Type something like test, pass it through strings to curve, and output. Alright, so today's effect is going to be simple, so I'm not going to actually go in and explain things, but I'll start off making some animations. So I'm going to start off with making a fill curve. I'm just going to change it to Enigon, and then I'm going to use a translate instance to shift the texts from right to left. So I'm going to pull out a combine XYZ from translation, pull out a map, map range from X, uh, from value I'm going to pull out a subtract, then from the top socket I'm going to get a scene time, and from the bottom socket I'm going to get an index. Okay. Next I'm going to go back to map range and change the 2 min to 2 and 2 max to 0. So if I run the animation, you can see the text are sliding in from the right. I'm just going to change the end frame to 120. Then next, I'm going to start adding some rotation. So rotate instance before the group, up, group output. Then from rotation, combine XYZ. And from Z, I'm going to get a map range. Uh, from the result of subtract, I'm going to plug it into map range and I'm going to change the 2 max value to tau. Next, I'm going to go back to strings to curve, change the pivot point setting to midpoint, then from the pivot point output, I'm going to connect it to pivot point of rotate instance right there. Okay. So if I were to run the animation, you can see the text spinning in from right to left. Right. So this is basically a sample animation. You don't it, your animation doesn't have to look like this. Um, but the actual uh, content of um, Ghost Trail is going to start from here. So the effect of Ghost Trail, um, well, we'll we'll need to retain some information of previous frames. So in order to do that, we need to use the simulation zone. Okay. So. With the simulation zone, I'm going to add a joint geometry. And if I were to plug the result of rotate instance into joint geometry, I can um, retain the information of previous cycle. But before I do that, I'm just going to use a uh, geometry to instance node to uh, set all the instance to one instance. Right. So I'm going to plug this into joint geometry. But make sure that you plug it into the top part of this input. So there's going to be two slots where you can plug it in, uh, but you have to plug it into the top. And if I were to reconnect the group output and run the animation from the beginning, now you can see all of these information being retained, right? So there's 89 instances at 89 frame. Um, of course, we're not going to need all these, so I'm just going to use a delete geometry to reduce the number of instances that we are looking at. So changing from point to instance, I'm going to grab a greater than or equal from selection. And from A, I'm going to pull out an index. And for B, this is going to be the number of ghosts that you want to keep. So I'm going to pull out a value and plug in 10. 
So if I were to go back and run the animation, there's only gonna be 10 instance of ghosts right here, right? So I'm just gonna keep it at that. And this is pretty much bulk of the uh, logic. So let's go in and set some materials. Right, so get a set material, choose the default material, and open up the shader editor, choose the default material, and first we'll delete the principal BSDF and get a transparent BSDF, and also addition. Okay. I'm going to connect these up with a mix shader and plug it into surface. Right, so let's go into render view and see what we have. But as you can see, even though we have a transparent BSDF, we are not getting any transparency. The reason for it is that default material setting for EV is set to opaque. So we have to change this to alpha blend. And now if I were to change the factor, we can see that um, we're getting transparency, right? Uh, I wanna make it able to control the transparency from the geometry nodes. So what I'm going to do is add a store named attribute right here. Uh, change the setting to instance and name to opacity. And for the shader, I'm going to get an attribute and change the type to job uh, instancers and get the opacity right here. Plug in the factor to the factor of mixed shader. And now I can control the opacity from geometry nodes. Okay. All right. So, uh, what am I going to do with the opacity though? Um, basically, since we plugged the geometry to instance to the top part of geom joint geometry, um, the newest data or the newest geometry is at the top. Uh, and as you go down, you're going to get uh, older and old older and information. So I want the opacity to be high at top and low at the bottom. So what I'm going to do is grab an index node, uh, bring it here, get a value, and get the this value and subtract it. Subtract the index from this value. Right. Uh, next, I'm going to duplicate this, uh, change it to divide and divide the result of subtract with also this value. Okay. I'm going to plug this result into opacity and you can see now even from the spreadsheet you have one at the top and going down you're going to get lower opacity. But if you look in the 3D viewport it looks like um, the fall off is not strong enough. So what I'm going to do is duplicate the divide, change it to power, uh, plug it in here and change the exponent to 3, right? So the fall off is stronger and now it looks more like it's fading away. Cool. Uh, so pretty much the effect is done. Um, but there's one thing, one more thing I can address, address with this uh, effect. Um, that's uh, if you want to control the space between each uh, ghost, uh, you can't make it uh, narrower, but uh, you can make the spacing uh, wider. Okay, so that's the part I'm gonna show you. Uh, so in order to do that, uh, let's add another value node. So the top value node is the number of ghosts that you're gonna have. Um, the next value is gonna be how much of a skip you're gonna have, right? So if I were to change the value below here to two and uh, I'm gonna connect it up with a multiply. Uh, now, since it's 10 times two, it's, there's gonna be 20 ghosts right now, right? There's gonna be 20 ghost count. Uh, but what I'm gonna do is delete geometry for every other ghost. So I'm gonna change this to instance and get an index. Uh, get a floored module, module, and plug in this two value to the bottom, and directly plug the value into selection like so. Okay. So now. If I were to run the animation, 
you can see it's more spaced apart uh, to make it more obvious I'm going to change it to 3 right so with 3 you can see all these ghosts are pretty much far apart and let's compare that to say the value of 1 so this is 1 and this is 3 right and you're going to end up with the same number of ghosts because we're doing multiplications here okay Okay, uh, so the effect is done. Um, so let's go back to what we just made. So going back, uh, this part really doesn't matter. Um, you can select whatever kind of animation you want. Um, but basically uh, what's important is the part from here. What we are doing is retaining the information of previous frames and setting, up, setting opacity so it kind of serves as a ghost trail, right? And that's basically it. Uh, that's how you make a ghost trail effect. And before I let you go, I have to address that. Um, this uh, effect is frame rate dependent. So if I were to change the frame rate to 60, it's going to look way a lot different from when it's... 24. So make sure if you have to change the frame rate during the course of the project that you uh, adjust these values as well. Okay. Right. So this effect is a pretty cool effect if you want to emphasize uh, the motion of text. So this is without um, ghost trail. And this is West Ghost Trail, so it's gonna look quite different, right? Um, the motion is emphasized and it looks kind of cooler, right? So yeah, um, please try it out and see you next time.